Hey students, hey Blue Group. Um, my name is Copera. Uh, here I am, and um, we're doing differentiated learning in my art class. Blue Group, um, before you continue your discussion about echo of a screen, with whatever you have, like a pen or a, um, you know, pencil, whatever you got, I recommend that you take the time to go ahead and actually sketch the painting that you are discussing. Um, and I know you can do that because I've seen your art and um, it doesn't need to be perfect by any means. So I'm kind of like modeling that perfection. And as I draw, I'm kind of modeling the seeing. So um, in our discussions in class in the breakout rooms, I saw that you know not everyone was seeing but if you draw, this is evidence that you're seeing. So we got the two, you know, babies. Yes, we were calling them babies in class. And then there's this red toga happening. And we have to ask ourselves, okay, so why exactly is, are there two babies? And what do they represent, right? So a good work of art in my opinion, because so much of this is subjective, is compelling. It makes me want to sit down and watch. And I'm just, just so engaged with this art right now, adding some cross hatching. And um, my baby looks happy. I'm going to make him look a little bit more sad. Um, he looks a little angry. So notice how as I draw, I'm starting to notice things. Also, I'm drawing like in kind of like a messy way, adding some hatching. And this kind of keeps you guys practicing your observational skills, even though you're in a different group. So I'm going to try to talk a little less and get this drawing done. Everyone should be doing it. Don't worry about it not being perfect. Okay. Just so you guys know, when you are doing human anatomy, the ears are lower. And a good thing to do is to draw an ellipses around. Um, a light one, um, just a light line that you can erase. So just knowing that the head is actually curving up. So the head is looking up. It's just doing some drawing talk right now. I'm realizing I'm going to need more space, make adjustments. I'm just erasing that so I have more space. So um, when I went to college, Blue Group, guys, the professors always talked about how we needed to go to art museums and really draw what we saw. Notice how when I'm drawing this hand, I am not <laughs> by any means making it perfect, right? It's just, I'm kind of seeing, I'm seeing the shadows, okay? And I'm just thinking about the spotlight. I mean, this baby's clearly in the spotlight, putting in the shadows. So yeah, I would like you to draw this in your sketchbook. You guys always stop me and you're like, wait, what are we doing? Yeah, I think you should draw it in your sketchbook as you're talking and um, do a sketch of it to just show that you're seeing. So obviously the baby's the focal point and you guys talked about that. Now we got the background, right? And we have the foreground and I'm noticing when I look at it that the baby's mouth is actually going around the other baby's head. So I'm going to take a the time to kind of try to emphasize that. It looks like this kind of comes out more that way. And the head, he's actually coming. So what does that make you think of? I'm thinking of birth, you know, things being born. Okay. So I'm going to pause my video. Take a minute, pause your video, and catch up on the drawing. Don't worry about it being perfect. Okay, I'm just waiting for the notification to make sure that that screenshot saved. Yeah, everyone's still drawing. And I'm sorry if I don't edit all of the content for you guys, but you know, time is short. So I'm putting in the foot. We see the foot of the guy. Notice how I'm not obsessing about fingers and toes when I draw. You guys take advanced art. We'll do a project called a handscape. Great project. But look, I'm not I'm not worrying about it being perfect. 
if I'm drawing a leg. So this is cool. We're working kind of like a little figure drawing lesson in today's differentiation. I love that. Okay. So, I mean, this, I, I just drawing this, I'm thinking like, okay, well, this isn't really a baby. This is kind of like almost a child becoming a man. Cause look at this body. It's just so in depth and the head is floating almost in space really. So the big question is, what does this head represent? We keep saying baby, baby, baby. Notice how angry he is, like crying baby. This reminds me of my two-year-old. So what does that make you think of as you're sketching? And drawing, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add hatching for the background. Think about what's in the background. I am now noticing, because I'm doing this drawing exercise, Erase, 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 erase. I am noticing, oh my goodness, um, like a factory back here. And I'm wondering, like, what does that represent? Period, was it six, six or seven? They were talking about how it might represent the Industrial Revolution. So what you guys are going to do, I'm talking ahead about all the stuff that's happening ahead. You can use some of your markers, by the way to get the color in. I do not have this color. This is a very um, kind of like dark gray color. So pick out a marker that represents this color. One of your Copic markers. But yeah, like what you guys are going to do is you will present a uh, painting to the class. So you should start to research. You should start to think about different paintings and you're gonna teach the class about a painting, I would like you to draw the painting. And I know that's kind of like an uncomfortable thing. I know Let's See um, is probably saying, switch my groups now. But you guys should be really, really proud about being in this group. Okay, so we got a lot of grays happening. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then obviously, you know, we have to think about color when we're analyzing. So as you sketch it with your markers or color pencils, you're meditating on color. Obviously, oh my goodness, this bright red. Can we talk about this bright red? It's so bright, I need to add another color. It's kind of like a fiery kind of red. So make sure you're looking through your colors. Yeah, it's more like that. So what, is, what does that represent? We have to think about what color represents too. So we have all this gray you know, surrounding us, right? And then we have these colors and the baby's kind of in bronze. So what does this mean? What is the author saying? What is up with this weird painting? You know, and then we got all this, wow, this like crazy dark value, you know, down here. Okay, I know I'm not drawing with the markers, but it's easier for me to record fast this way. So I'm ready for class for you guys. But yeah, so like look at all these little dots and kind of like markers and swirls. I totally didn't draw the ear. But yeah, I want you to go ahead and I want you to get a sketch done in your journal. And then I want you to actually annotate the sketch. Right now, this is hard because you're like, oh, I just invested all this time and sketching this drawing, and now you want me to write on top of it? Are you kidding, Miss Copera? Yes, I want you to. So after you're done thinking about this painting, you know, obviously you should write the title of the painting. Um, this is Echo of a Scream. By, let's make sure we spell the author's name right, um, David Alfaro. Carlos. All right, cool. So I'm going to pause my video, just give you some time to catch up on this like anticipatory set. Going ahead again, pausing my video. Here we go. Okay, guys, so hopefully by now you have your um, drawing all set. Um, please stop wherever you are and post this to Seesaw. 
Okay. Now I want you to, um, you know, return to thinking about what we talked about last class, the different steps or different notes on art criticism. You should have that posted to Seesaw. Um, hopefully you also did notes on Echo of a Scream, but I heard your feedback. Thank you so much for your feedback. And some of you wanted more time. So that's kind of what we're doing today. But I thought it would be very valuable to make a key. And you guys should have markers in different colors. So let's go ahead. Let's think about a key for the different colors. As we are annotating. So um, D-A-I-J. I often refer to this in class. Again, credit to Rosa Jew and Art Teachers of the Past and Green Dot for coming up with this process. Um, the AIJ are the four steps to art criticism, and this is the key. All right, so whatever key we decide on right now, we'll kind of try to stick to that. So the first step, because I'm writing in blue, maybe I'll pick a darker blue, don't trip if you just, you're using the same blue, is description. Description, and that's when we are talking about the elements of art. Elements of art. Sorry, my V's are funny, or my F's are funny. And it's like, the question is, what do you see? Okay, I can hear you guys now being like, we copy that? Yeah, I think you should make a key right now. Okay, so again, pause your video if you feel like this is going too fast. Um, next color, um, let's pick green. That will be analysis, and that's when we talk about the principles of design, okay? I, I'll write of design. Of design. Again, you will take photos of all this, put it on Seesaw, so you're getting ready to teach us. The next step, principles, principles, what color should we pick? Um, let's see, for interpretation. Hmm. I, I, I can't go in order of the rainbow because yellow would be too light. So let's go to purple for interpretation. I can't write today. Breathe in, breathe out. Interpretation will be purple, fab, 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 fab. And then we'll do red for judgment. Okay, judgment. And judgment, really much it's like, the question is, is this a good work? Um, why? And you have to back it up with evidence. Evidence in art evidence that says evidence is what you see is a good work why interpretation i forgot to write the question is what is the artist saying okay so let's make sure we have this key let's back up Everyone make sure you have description in blue. Fabulous. Um, make sure you have interpretation in green. Or sorry, analysis in green. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, make sure you have um, interpretation in purple. Just kind of check, self-monitor. And make sure you have in red judgment. And those are the four steps of DAIJ that we went over the last class, and now we're practicing it with echo of a scream. So stop and post your key to Seesaw, please. You could pause your video now. Let me know in the chat how you're doing right now, because you know you're in a breakout room. Okay. So CFU, because I want to know. So please engage. I'll give you points for engaging, writing in the chat. Um, one, I am lost. Three is Maso Menos. Five is 
I'm good. Okay, just kind of like let me know in the chat. Pause your video and post this to Seesaw so far. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, hi students, we are back. Let me make sure my microphone is nice and up. So, um, check in, great. Okay, we're gonna keep moving forward. So I want you to actually annotate your piece and this might be, you know, frustrating. Um, if you don't have enough space, you could also write on top with post-its. Okay, so obviously we go like step one. Um, I'm gonna make it a little thinner. Um, this is a painting, yes. And we're talking about the elements of art, so any sort of detail. So I want you to actually label your drawing. So we see a lot of trash, okay. Um, we see, we're thinking about elements of art too. Dark value. Okay, so a lot of dark value. There's also um, dark value here. Dark, if we go back and we look at it, right, it may be helpful to have the picture right there. Dark value right here. All You can even shade it if you want. Right, a lot of dark value. And, um, you know, look at all of this black color. I mean, that's really intense, right? As far as space, space, if you can't read that, the element of art I'm talking about right now is space, meaning there is a clear foreground, right? We see a lot of details with this garbage in the front, right? All of this trash, I even see kind of like, it looks like a hanger almost. What might a hanger symbolize? Or a pipe? I see a lot, it's almost like a broken hanger. That's interesting. So space, so in the foreground we see a lot of details with the garbage, details. And obviously you can pause your video and talk about what you agree or you know, disagree, maybe pause your video you know, and ask yourself, we don't want to skip around with the steps too much, but if a question comes up, I'll write it. What does the, I think it's a hanger. You guys can write in the chat if you agree or disagree. What does the hanger symbolize? Okay. And um, then we see in the background, right? So as far as space, when we think about space, we think about background and foreground. And I want you to focus on at least three elements in description. Um, in the background, background, we see like a factory. So what does that factory represent? I hear crying outside. So background factory. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I mean, I see in, in description too, you want to talk about like the things you actually see in the painting, right? So I see like a splat of dark. So I don't know what that represents, right? Is it a tree, right? You want to write all of your thinking and it's okay to not know what something is. Okay. So I talked about value right? Self-monitor. I talked about value. That's one element. I talked about space. That's another element. I should talk about one more. I do want to talk about the shading and the form. So like, look at this light source right here. Um, so light um, form. So it looks really 3D, right? So this is the form of the piece. So the light really sticks out. We got light here, we got light here. Strong light, strong light, wow. And then like light right there. So you have to ask yourself, what does the light represent? So we're always thinking ahead to the next step, but we don't wanna jump. We just wanna make sure we see everything. And yeah, and just so much trash. It's like, I don't know, does the 
background represent the past and the foreground and represents the future. Okay, so that's step one. Pause your video. And here's the thing, like students see way more than I do. That's why I loved teaching DAIJ. So I don't know, maybe go further, maybe identify this as a storm. What you think and what you see, it's mostly factual, but maybe you're seeing other things that other people don't know. Maybe you want to point out that there's only a little bit of warm color right here. Warm color. Okay, so go ahead, pause your video and make sure you've labeled um, everything that you see in blue. Okay guys, and the art criticism lesson continues. Um, we are now on step two, analysis. And that's when we deal with the principles of design. So let's zoom out, use our stuff in our deck. So how is the composition organized? Emphasis, focal point, unity, balance, etc. And I really do like the questions on this slide, right? So again, emphasis, focal point, where does your eye go first, okay? So obviously, and I'm doing green now, right? My eye goes first here. Guys, again, your work doesn't need to be neat, but I want to see that you're thinking and seeing. So this is my focal point. My eye enters the piece right here. So I really feel like the author wants us to think about this relationship. How is it achieved? Well, I mean you know, it's a baby, right? We're going to look at a baby, right? So like the eye is attracted because we're humans. We see we're attracted to human and imagery. So it's just a, such a powerful and bold choice to have this. And then we zoom out, right? So my eye goes here first. My eye enters the piece here. And then we zoom out to see the piece right here. zoom out and we see this and it's like oh my goodness what is happening and it makes us feel uncomfortable then my eye goes to here right to here because it's such an intense color and all of the line work all the line going in this direction like from the toga pulls my eye this way to this break and I think this means something like the red means something so kind of like in this process, we're identifying where the eye goes and like those are our key symbols. And then I go all over the place. Like I go from the trash and the foreground all the way up to here. Right. So I'm, go I'm going all over the place and I'm asking myself, what is this trash symbolized? So that's that's kind of like where my eye is going as far as unity. Right. As far as unity, and you can make notes in your margin, right? So the focal point is the baby. Focal point, baby. As far as unity, how is it unified? Why? Unity, I mean, there is just so much repetition. Repetition of, um, you got the baby, babies. Babies, hey, 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 babies, the screaming babies, you got the repetition of the trash and the garbage. Like there's so much trash, there's so much garbage. Oh my goodness. Um, and, and then you have a limited color. Oopsies, where I go. Then you have the limited uh, color palette. And that color palette is limited to grays and red. Okay, is it balanced? We have, I wish we talked about balance more in distance learning. It's hard to cover everything. But I would say, yes, it is balanced. The line of symmetry kind of being right here, right? And then as far as visual weight, I mean, if I were to go real crazy, I would say this area is very heavy because we got the baby right here. And then this area of the piece is really heavy with the toga. 
right? So again, um, this area and that area are equally visually heavy. It would be asymmetrical balance. Okay, so I went through all the thinking. Notice I didn't do much writing, but I do, you know, want you guys to talk in the chat, um, mention other things. Maybe you disagree with me about the focal point. Maybe your eye goes right to the toga. So pause your video, guys, and go ahead and talk about, like, do you agree with the focal point? Do you disagree? How else is it unified? You know, what did I miss? Because I'm always missing stuff. The repetition of the bronze color makes it unified. The repetition of the trash. Uh, maybe you want to talk about this red right here and how that balances out. Ooh, maybe this is, is this the red of a former baby is this the clothes of a former baby red makes you think of blood so just pause your video and talk in the chat i should see chat um conversation happening and i'll mark down points as i see that okay and we are on continues um we are now on oops am i recording is this thing on Guys, don't make fun of me for my um, amateur YouTube channel. Subscribe! Subscribe! I teach art and drama and other things. And I'm a mom. Hey, guys, we're back. We're on interpretation. Have you made it this far, students? Okay, you could do a CFU in the chat right now. If you're not writing in the chat at all, guys, FYI, I am assuming you are not out there. <laughs> So let me know, obviously like four would be, I'm in the middle, I'm almost good, but I'm still kind of maso menos. And uh, two, a two would be like, okay, this is going too fast, but I'll catch up in the video, but don't like wait to do this. Okay, so what color did it we pick for interpretation? Purple. Okay, I am kind of like out of space. <laughs> and I would understand if you guys are, like, whoa, this is too extra. I totally get it. Um, I do want us to press ahead. Maybe you want to write your interpretation in the chat. I'm actually going to erase some space. Maybe you want to write your interpretation on the next page to write my interpretation. Um, maybe you want to do it kind of like smaller. So as far as interpretation notes, and I think you guys, some of you got them last class by Seesaw. According to Seesaw data, not all of you answered. So again, what is the artist saying? So I would start when you're doing interpretation by just listing topics, and those are words that come to your mind. Okay, topics, words that have come to everyone's mind in relationship to this painting so far that I've heard are destruction, um, war, um, children, uh, a cycle of life because, you know, you kind of have like the birth, believe it or not, this is making people think of a birth. That was a really apt observation for that student, you know, baby coming out of something, um, cycle of life. So, you know, I think I heard Jose say like different generations. Um, one class talked about the industrial um, revolution. Okay. So, and then someone was saying, Andy Alcazar was saying, like, we have to consider the time period, right? That this was made, um, when you're interpreting, you don't have to, right? But like, so it's like 1937, and there's no wrong answer because this painting could mean something very different for you. So what is the artist saying about destruction? Here's the thing. When you're coming up with a theme, you have to write it in a full sentence, right? So, um, you know, you could pause your video. You could write this on the opposite page. So I would recommend having two pages. So when I think of a theme... When I think of a theme for this piece, theme, it's a whole sentence, right? So, um, oh, another thing people said was tragedy. So um, if I had to guess, when? So guys, pause your video, talk about like what is the artist saying about destruction, 
war, children, the cycle of life, generations, industrial revolution, tragedy, that says tragedy, or even like pain, suffering. Pause your video. And as a class right now, I want you to write other topics in the chat. So pause your video and blue team, I want you to write topics in the chat. Great, thank you for pausing your video. So now I want you to pause your video and you know write a theme, right? So David, what's his name? Secu can't write. Securios is conveying. I try to throw in some academic language for you guys. The idea that when one generation suffers during a war, another um, the next generation suffers as well okay so um, make sure you have topics you know stop and highlight your topics you know generation I got suffer I got war Mainly the idea that one generation suffers. So those are the topics I stuck to. I want everyone's theme to be different and make sure you highlight that and identify that you have a theme. If you're confused, stop and pause. Your theme could be on the next page in your sketchbook, but pause, make sure you pause your video and as a group, you work out together, like what do you think the artist is saying? And this right here, what we're doing right here, class, is we are doing college work. We're preparing for college because you will have discussions in college about um, ideas, paintings, notions, and by practicing this, you're preparing for college art students. So keep up the good work. Okay, guys, we are back. Rock and roll. Um, so final step um, is judgment. Um, kids usually do judgment pretty quickly. Right. So do you think this is a good painting? Um, we will go over more aesthetic theories if we have time. But I think this is an and you guys should pause your video and talk like, do you think it's a good painting? Like, don't just don't just write what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Like, pause your video and talk right now. Aye. Like, is this a su successful work of art? Why or why not? What makes it successful? Right? And really, like, what makes it successful? That's your evidence. You have to back up your thinking. So, pause your video. Talk. Okay. So, um, thank you for pausing your video. I think this is an awesome work of art because... It keeps me interested and makes me feel strong emotions. Um, I'll just say DS makes me think of war and also the trauma of the COVID pandemic. It does. I, I, it makes me think about how this, um, the tragedy of the now, it, like the COVID-19 pandemic is going to infect, uh, affect all, in fact, and affect all generations. 
uh, makes me think of the COVID pandemic and how it's hurting kids. I could write and write and write, but the point I'm making is it is a timeless work. Kind of like how Spice Girls are timeless. You guys are singing Spice Girls, <laughs> which cracks me up. So this is my final step. This is judgment. This is step four. Um, but I, I invite you guys to write more. And yes, we are going in the direction of writing about works of art. Don't freak out. Come and talk to me during office hours today. Um, catch up with this. But I want you to pause your video and like, it would be interesting. Do people disagree right in the chat? Do you think that this is, do you think that this is not a good work of art? Where did my slides go? Like, is it not good? And if so, why? Um, this is an introduction, everyone, to DAIJ art criticism. I'm not really sure who developed it, but I learned it from Rosa Jew. Um, it is a great strategy for students to learn about a work of art. Look at all this texture. I didn't even talk about texture. Wow. Um, it is a great process for all students to go through as they practice being academics, thinking, seeing, observing, analyzing, interpreting, and just making judgments about the world and the environment and what they see around them. It's a great thinking exercise that prepares you for college leadership in life. My name is Rachel Copera. Thank you guys for doing this lesson. If you didn't finish it, please finish it. <laughs> okay, and post it to Seesaw. All right, guys, have a good day.